uh, we are going to start uh, with uh, the third talk, which is planning a neuropixel trajectory. And the learning objective of this talk is going to be segmented in three parts. First, we are going to look into why uh, trajectory planning is important for our experiments and uh, certain other things that we could consider during certain um, during surgery practices. Then we will have uh, uh, demonstrations of the tools that are out there for surgery planning. One of them is herbs, which we developed in our group in, at uh, Kavli in TNU. Next, Dan Berman uh, uh, will demonstrate Pinpoint, and then Andy Peters um, will show us how Neuropixel Trajectory Explorer works. Finally, concluding with um, how uh, all of these uh, devices, uh, all of these softwares have similarities or uh, differences between um, that will help us uh, make an informed decision on trajectory planning. All of the links for the GitHubs for these softwares are linked and pinned to the Slack channel of uh, trajectory planning. So you can find it there. Right. So let's start with the basic question, why is trajectory planning so important? So we always deal with animal variability during our experiments. And one of the things that we uh, need to keep consistent is having targeting the desired regions that we want to record cells from, which we know NeuroPixel helps us record thousands of neurons. So to make it more efficient and help us have better coverage by maximizing uh, the number of recording channels and sites, trajectory planning is quite important. Uh, I record from uh, uh, the retrospinal cortex and my own experience, uh, some things that I considered before I go into the surgery room is that I always want to have some room for error when I'm targeting uh, the retrospinal cortex and want, want to record from both the subregions of the retrospinal cortex. But if I put implant the probe just up and down, which is perpendicular to the brain, uh, it might not give me the maximum amount of recording slides at the um, disc granular retrospinal cortex. So one thing that you could consider is to choose an angle to maximize uh, the room of the recording uh, sites that you um, want in your targeted region. The other thing is to consider um, making use of the electrophysiological landmarks that are, that are in the brain. And uh, again, coming back to the ex my personal example is that recording from the retrospinal cortex, I use the superior, uh, superior sinus as one of the landmarks so I can implant, right, uh, or um, make decisions about where my coordinates are, uh, depending on um, where the sinus is, because uh, the sutures on the skulls vary quite a lot, uh, depending on the animals. I understand that the real brains are um, quite different from the 3D annotated volumes that we use. So um, trajectory planning is the way to go and it would give you a good estimate or an approximate estimate about how helpful it would be um, at least on your first try. So let's move ahead and uh, see how herbs works. Okay, so um, you can find uh, herbs uh, developed in our group on the our group GitHub page. So it is completely, um, it's a Python package. You import herbs, run herbs, and you have the GUI window open. This run, uh, this you can load uh, both um, the my, mouse atlas, Allen mouse atlas, or uh, the rat atlas. For this example, let's use the rat atlas. So you can use the slider here to the, uh, to the region where you want. And on the left bottom, you can see the coordinates of where you're moving your cursor. 
Just want to know if you can see my cursor. Okay, perfect. And you can add in boundaries or switch between sections. You can even color, uh, add boundaries and color code it. So let's look at the sagittal section. See, this is the retrospenial cortex and you go to the probe maker, select whether you want your whether you're using your pixel one or your pixel two. And you can see on the left bottom uh, side where you are moving your cursor and you can add right there move over to the object controller add your probe pieces merge them and since neuropixel 2 has four shanks each of the shank has its own readout namely zero merged probe zero one two three and if you want to have a comparative view just unclick them and there you go. You have a so something else that we can do is follow the exact same the mirror for days and days and days. And, days. and, and this is channels, something that Anna Lady Mendoza showed um, in which uh, she recorded record. from neurons in the primary visual cortex. So if you have any questions, have you can post it on the Slack channel and I the same neuron or different neurons, um, which is that different neurons respond to different combination of images. For example, neuron Thanks 9 for the, responds the intro to problem. these and two images. Thank you to anybody else who's on the West Coast and woke up early in the morning. Neuron 19. So I'm going to share my screen. And so, on. So, so if you, you go through the picture, link on Slack, uh, neuron, it'll take you to uh, which uh, the like. GitHub and pages for some of the tools. The um, so page. you'll land on this page what here. Um, there's a link down go, here that opens you know, uh, Pinpoint's uh, web app. Um, there's also the a Windows desktop download. And there's a link to the documentation pages. If you go to the documentation, there's a link on the left side to tutorials. We have a bunch of videos and explanations for how to use Pinpoint in depth. So you can go there later um, uh, if you want to know more about what's going on. What is changing so the, the web app, um, when you load it, will look like this. Um, I'm using my mouse to control the uh, the viewer seat. So I'm just zooming out right now and using the left mouse button to rotate the brain um, side to side and to pitch it up and down. Um, I think the, the sort of fun part about uh, Pinpoint is that it's a 3D view um, and you can just drop probes uh, into the view and then move them around directly. Um, so here what I'm doing is clicking, left-clicking on the probe to uh, grab control of it. Um, and then I'm using different keyboard keys to move the probe along different axes. And you can watch the videos to see how that all works. Um, but right now I'm clicking the W key to move along the EP axis. Um, and then I'm going to drop the probe in the brain um, with the Z axis. And uh, just like in herbs and in the trajectory explorer that you'll see, uh, Pinpoint interpolates along the probe to show you where you are um, and shows you this in-plane slice on the side uh, to give you sort of context uh, for where you are in the brain. Um, I think one of the, the nice things about Pinpoint is that it's, it's sort of fast and easy to move this probe around and explore different trajectories. Um, we can drop different brain regions into the scene if you want to quickly figure out how to align a trajectory onto a set of regions. And if my uh, zoom thing wasn't in the way, I could snap the probe um, directly onto the 3D models um, in the scene. Um, we also have uh, different options and settings. Um, one of the ones that I think are, are really useful is being able to drop into the scene um, other 3D models. Uh, so for example, here I've put the skull model, um, uh, a skull model, uh, and the well that we often use for our implants. Um, and the idea here is that you can check against um, those 3D models to make sure that you're not going to create a collision with a particular uh, trajectory. Um, we also support and pinpoint multiple probes. Uh, so you can drop another probe in the scene. You can make sure that your probes themselves aren't going to crash into each other. Um, and both probes interpolate. Um, through the brain so you can plan multi-probe trajectories and figure out how that's all going to work. Um, 
I can't show you live right now, uh, but we've hooked up Pinpoint with SenseApex manipulators, and we're hoping to hook them up with new scale manipulators. Um, and the idea there is uh, live while you're performing your experiment, while you're moving the probe over the mouse brain, um, as long as we have some reference coordinate, uh, and the one we're using in our lab is Bregma, um, the probes in Pinpoint will mimic the position over the in vivo mouse brain um, and show you where you are, sort of. Um, and that all depends on having sort of an, an alignment between uh, Pinpoint and the real mouse brain. Um, so that's the last thing I was going to mention here, and I'll let you go look at all the videos later. Um, so one of the features that we've got built in here is a transform. So right now, the brain is actually in transformed space. I'm going to switch it to just the raw CCF atlas. Um, you can see that the CCF atlas is pitched down um, relative to the horizontal axis and is sort of compressed on AP. Um, this MRI transform is our best estimate right now of what the real uh, mouse brain actually looks like inside of the skull. Um, so we recommend you use that. I know it's also uh, a similar transform is implemented in the Trajectory Explorer. Um, I don't know if it's implemented in herbs, but we can pass you the scaling factors to do that. Um, uh, but that transform makes a big difference in being able to, to hit your targets. Um, so that's everything about Pinpoint. Uh, ask questions in Slack and uh, check out those videos if you have time. Thank you. Great, thanks a lot, Dan. So I'm gonna share my screen and then talk to you a little bit about uh, NeuroPixels Trajectory Explorer. So this one uh, was in MATLAB because I'm a MATLAB heavy user. So if you don't have MATLAB, there is a standalone version available, but it's not kept up as much as you should be. Uh, all right, so this tool is kept on my GitHub repo, which is shown here, and it's also in the Slack group that you can find online. So today I'll just take you through a very simple demonstration of planning a trajectory between V1 and LGN simultaneously. All right, so when you are going to download this program, you go to the GitHub page and all of the download information and all of the tools to learn how to use it are listed here. So if there's any questions on that, you can ask me about that in the Slack. So when you open this in MATLAB, you'll do this by just typing in NeuroPixels Trajectory Explorer and hitting enter. That'll pull up the GUI, which looks like this. So uh, when you pull up this GUI, the main things to note are that you have this 3D rotational brain, which is similar to what Dan's just shown you. Uh, it's showing you the probe trajectory in red here, the actual probe location in blue, and then the slice. So as you change your viewpoint, the slice will change the viewpoint with you and it'll allow you to look at this slice from any particular angle. Okay, so uh, we can, put different areas onto this view in similar way to what Dan's program did. So this whole section here is the way you add 3D areas. I'll just show you this area here first, which is search areas. So in this case, we're gonna look at primary visual cortex. So we can just put in primary visual and hit enter. And then we'll pick the thing we want, hit okay. And it'll draw primary visual cortex in the back. All right, after we do this, we want to look at the lateral geniculate. So we'll type in lateral gen, and then it'll find the DLGN here. So we'll hit OK. OK, so now we've got our two areas that we want to plan our trajectory around. We can toggle what we're looking at with this visibility down here. So the slice, we can either have the uh, volume here. We can have the areas if we click it once more, or we can get rid of it if we click it again. We can also get rid of things like the brain outline and put a grid on the screen if we want it. Okay, so the main thing here is that we want to plan a trajectory going from V1 to the LGN. So we can move our probe with the arrow keys. So now I'm just going to press the down button, which will move the probe backwards, and the left button, which will move the probe leftwards, and we're going to get it right into the middle of V1. So what you're seeing on the display over here is the current locations that your probe is going through. So this is the blue line here is what corresponds to these areas here. All right, so I have my probe going through primary visual cortex on the top. Now I wanna have it go through the LGN. So I can angle my view this way 
And then I can change the angle of the probe by holding shift and pressing forward. So this just moves the probe like this until we get the angle in this direction that we want. Now we wanna set the media lateral angle so we can come from this top down view. I'm gonna hold shift and press right. And what that'll do is change the angle in this direction. Okay, so now it looks like my probe has the right angles because it's going through both of these structures in the red line. Uh, it also looks like the blue is going through both of these structures, but if I wanted to change the depth, I can hold Alt and then press up and down, and then you can see the probe is going up and down along this trajectory. Okay, so in this case, let's say the optimal thing I wanted to do was leave a little bit of the probe outside of the brain because that gives me a nice electrophysiological landmark like Pearl was talking about. Uh, if I do this, I can still hit V1 and I can still hit LGN. So let's say these are the coordinates I wanna go with. Now, when I set up my physical experiment, I'll replicate this trajectory by following the instructions that are listed in the top left here. So these are the angles you want your probe to be at, the azimuth, which is the horizontal, and the elevation, which is the vertical. It'll give you insertion points relative to bregma in AP, ML, and then depth relative to the brain surface. Uh, and then it'll show where the start recording sites are up here and where the end recording sites are down here relative to bregma coordinates. Uh, so those are the main features, it's pretty much uh, a similar concept to what Dan was showing. Um, there's a few upcoming things that I want to add. So one main thing uh, is what uh, Dan was talking about in terms of aligning the CCF Atlas to MRI databases. So this is being done along with Josh Siegel. Hopefully at the end of the day, we'll all have the same transforms. So you're not going to get different things with different packages. Um, the other main thing is that we're working on interfacing this with new scale manipulators. So if you have this particular type of manipulator, it'll show you an online version of where your probe is in the brain while you're doing an actual experiment. Okay, so just to quickly wrap this up, these are some of the feature comparisons of the tools that you saw today. I'll post this on the Slack so you don't have to worry about looking at it all now, but the main things are that all of these run in different platforms, so you can pick your favorite. They all have rat and mouse atlases to some extent. They all have 3D areas. Okay, so here's where they diverge. Um, multiple probes, this is on the first two, but not in the trajectory planner at the moment. Rig collisions, this is a nice thing, which is unique to Dan's. Um, probe, probe placement can either be click and drag like in Pearls, or it can be done with the arrow keys or some combination of these things. Um, and in terms of manipulator interactions, currently Pinpoint works with Sensipex, I believe Dan, um, and Trajectory Explorer works with new scale manipulators. So I'll put this on the Slack so that you can take a look at it. One of the things I might recommend is because they're all free, you can download them all, play with them, see what works best, ask us questions within the next two weeks. We can help you get started and then you can start planning your trajectories. Uh, right.